There are many tactics a narcissist will use to manipulate, control, and disable you psychologically. These include things like gaslighting, deflecting, intimidating, and so much more. If you've been reading and researching about narcissism, you know the narcissist is a master at distorting reality, changing history, avoiding responsibility, and systematically breaking people down mentally and emotionally. In this video, I will give you 10 concrete examples of what the narcissist might say or do to psychologically disable and destroy you. Now, keep in mind that on occasion, some of these things happen in normal relationships, but it wouldn't happen often and would usually be followed by a genuine apology. With a narcissist or other toxic type of person, these will happen regularly, deliberately, and often to a point of absurdity. And it will never come with an apology, unless it's the type of narcissistic apology along the lines of, I'm sorry, but you deserved it, or some other form of justification, and then they will go on to do it again soon after. I'm Lisa Blanc, life coach and author, and if it's your first time here, welcome. I post weekly videos on topics related to mental health, trauma, stress, and relationships. This content is for informational purposes only, so if you are in need of support, please seek help from a mental health professional in your area. And if you like this video, please like, comment, or subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. In no particular order, here are some of the ways a narcissist or some of the things a narcissist will say or do to mess with you psychologically. Again, keeping in mind that some narcissists are much more pathological than others. Number one, they will pretend to have selective amnesia. They didn't hear, see, say, or do the things you are remembering. They are made out to be a figment of your imagination. They'll say things like, I never said that, or you know I'd never say something like that, or why are you always making things up, or you're twisting what I said, taking it out of context. Number two, if they do admit to remembering what happened, they'll delete, distort, and edit the details. And they mix their edits in with just enough facts to make you question whether it might actually be true. And it can be the most trivial and stupid things, but it can also be something significant. So they'll usually start with something small in the beginning because they're testing you. So here's an example. They'll try to make you believe that you said something that you didn't say. So with complete certainty and confidence, they'll tell you the false thing that they're claiming you said, followed by, remember, right after that you said, and then they'll rhyme off word for word something that you did say. And you're like, oh, right, I did say that part. So then you think maybe, maybe I said the other part too. I don't think so, but wait, did I? Bingo, they've just instilled enough doubt in you. And as soon as you give sign that you're even considering the possibility that this false thing that you said might be true, they pounce on that and they get some form of agreement from you on their new version of events. If it's something significant, they'll repeat the edited narrative, uh, making more edits, casually weaving in more details as though they're facts, and then reminding you of your agreement until a whole new version of reality is created. So the narcissist will combine their untruths with the truth, or at least enough of the truth, to make you doubt yourself and make you lose trust in your own perceptions, interpretations, and memories. And, you know, we've all had the experience of sharing a memory with someone and the other person saying, no, that's not how it happened. And as you each recount your version of the events, you know, maybe you agree to disagree, but often you start negotiating on those inconsistencies. But what's different with a narcissist is that it's not a negotiation and it happens constantly. So over time, you start to lose trust in your own memory. On some level, you may know that they're lying, but you're confused and unsure of what's real and what's not. 
See, most people think that memories are like video recordings, that they're permanent and unchangeable, but they're not. And in fact, memories are being edited all the time. Every time you pull up a memory, it's subject to modification. And if you're interested in this topic, there's an amazing documentary called Memory Hackers, which I linked in the description below. And in this documentary, researchers, researchers show how easily our memories can be manipulated. Number three, the narcissist puts words in your mouth and then says, you even said it yourself. And if you confront their lie, they get aggressive about it. They start pulling stuff out of nowhere and deflecting. And this is when they shift your attention away from their behavior onto your behavior. They usually do this by pushing your emotional buttons. How this might play out is you're having an argument, disagreeing on something that you know, they did. So they start getting defensive. They start getting mad. And when their usual tactics to manipulate you don't work, they might say things like, well, how can we have a relationship when you're always accusing me of lying? It's like you're always looking to make me seem like a bad guy. I think we need to talk about why you always need to be right. Almost any time a narcissist accuses you of something, like lying, cheating, manipulating, or whatever, they are either deflecting or projecting. They are trying to gain control of the conversation and of you. So, pause for a moment and bring yourself back to the issue at hand. What were you talking about? and pay close attention to what they're accusing you of because they are giving you clues about what they are up to and their own intentions. And if they manage to rile you up emotionally, you'll see that they're happy about it. They'll smirk. They'll say something condescending like, maybe we should talk about this when you calm down as they roll their eyes and walk away from you. Then you're standing there thinking, wait a minute, what the heck just happened? And if they don't walk away, they might use this next tactic, which is telling you that everyone agrees with them and is on their side. Something like, even your brother said you blamed him for everything growing up, or even your dad thinks you're crazy. Now, what started as a disagreement or an argument about, you know, them lying turns into you having a pattern of falsely accusing or blaming other people. Now keep in mind, these are just examples. I could have chosen from thousands of other examples. So feel free to add your examples in the comment section to help other people recognize what deflection might look like when you're in a relationship with a narcissist. Number five is that they'll say things to backtrack on the promises they made to you and then blame you for it. They'll say things like, I said that when I thought you were going to hold up your end of the bargain, or that was when I thought you were deserving, or you were going to bring more to this relationship, or, you know, fill in the blank with whatever supposed shortcoming of yours. In other words, all of the promises they made, that whole fantasy illusion they created for you is getting pulled away piece by piece and it's all your fault. It's because you're not good enough. You're not worthy. Depending on how malignant the narcissist is, they can use sensitive information you shared in vulnerable moments as evidence of why they are now forced to break their promises to you. For example, I get now why that happened. Fill in the blank with some terrible traumatic event. Number six, they'll play on your fears, on your guilt, and on any other emotion that they can use to trigger a reaction from you. They want you to act out because that makes it so much easier for them to make you believe that you're the issue in this relationship. It makes it so much easier for them to manipulate you. So they'll poke at you, they'll provoke you, and then they'll just kind of stand back and wait to see your reaction. When they see a reaction, they know the buttons. Number seven, their body language doesn't match their words. They are telling you that they love you while physically distancing themselves from you, or they're stroking your hair or, you know, looking into your eyes while insulting you. Number eight, they will invalidate you by saying things like, here we go again with all of your drama. 
You're just so sensitive. You're too needy. You're being hysterical. Why are you overreacting like this? You're always blowing things out of proportion. They want you to feel like your thoughts, beliefs, and concerns are wrong and invalid. Number nine, they will isolate you from any supports you have. They will belittle you for wanting to be close to your family, spend time with friends, or for accessing professional supports. Here's how this might sound. You're too attached to your family. It's unhealthy. It's dysfunctional. Don't you think it's kind of weird that you call your sister every other day? You're an adult. It's always about the kids. Oh, is that what your therapist said? Number 10. This is not about you. Why are you always making everything about you? They want you to believe that you're the one who is self-centered and like you're the one that's selfish and self-absorbed. They may also say things like, I'm doing this for your own good. No one else would do this for you. No one will ever love you like I do. And of course, this is to make you feel like you are undeserving of their presence in your life. Like you owe them something. That they are teaching you to be a decent human being. If you can think of other typical things a narcissist will say or do, please add them in the comment section below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.